Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing another picture from Mine Arise Dirty Roper by Rita Berman. This is um, the page that we've started where we did the houses and the trees and things and we're moving down a row and we're going to do this little bit. I've been having a look to try and work out um, whether this, what's going on with this picture and I think this bit is a picture and this is a line down here and this is a separate picture so we're just going to do this one um, I thought it would be quite interesting we've got these lamps and things I'm going to use my polychromos pencils today I just happen to have them out I've been using different pencils in the different pictures just to try out different pencils so I thought it would be fun and, uh, and we can just have a go and see how they work out on this paper now the first thing I have noticed is we've got a lot of sky here and we've got the lanterns I don't really want the sky to be black like it's night I think that's a bit too dark so I think we could maybe do a sort of dark a sort of blue fading lighter towards the lamp something like that so that's what I'm going to have a go at um, I'm going to use some pretty blues rather than worrying about whether they're really sky coloured I think that's more fun so I'm going to start with my Prussian blue and I'm going to use that sort of around the edge. I'm going to do a bit more at the bottom because the distance from the bottom to the lamp is greater. So I'm just doing using a uh, medium pressure quite evenly if I can by having the pencil on its side as much as possible. It's quite tricky with mine being quite short but uh, giving it a go and I'm going to match that here we've got a sort of mirror image picture here so I'm going to do the same with each as far as I can obviously it's not uh, an exact science as it were so do that and then around the edge up the side here and I'm, you know some colouring over the top of this black it's easier than trying to colour around it. If we do the same on all of it, it will match. It probably won't really show up that much anyway. I'm just checking that you can see what I'm doing. I'm very good at accidentally pushing the book out of the way and you can't see. So at the moment I've just got a fairly even layer, but what we do need to do is slightly fade that off so that it blends into the next colour. But I'm going to do the same on this one first. And then show you um, what I would do. Now with um, backgrounds it can be quite daunting but with smaller pictures it's more fun. There's not so much space to worry about so it can make the whole task a little bit easier. On the facing page to this one I did a very light um, background because I wanted some white things to stand out as white and that worked quite well. So you see what I'm doing is doing a lighter layer as I go towards the middle and uh, doing that same thing all the way around using a round and round movement which I find makes it easier to blend the next colour in. Okay, I'm going to leave that there and move to the next colour. Um, I'm just looking, I really picked the wrong one just going to give it a little sharpen and show you. I have picked the bluish turquoise next. We're going for sort of turquoisey shades rather than just plain blues. I want to take it from about here where we started to fade it. We could go over it all. I may end up going over it all. I think I will because the shade is a little bit different. I'm being quite heavy handed around the edge because I want to cover all of that. And then as we get to the more faded bits, we'll use less pressure. Because we want to still see the colour underneath. We want it to be a little bit lighter as we're coming towards the lamp, things like that. So I'm using the same technique as I did before. It's just getting lighter to go towards here. Okay, so same on this side. You can see how if you had a whole huge book, double page, and you were doing this sort of background, take a lot of patience and time. It 
can be really worthwhile though but uh, it just depends on whether you want to get a book finished or whether you want to make every page absolutely amazing I mean some people manage to do both but uh, it's uh, it's worth knowing the technique and having a go if you have a go on something small like this it can be a lot quicker so my next colour is this little little man he is i shall look him up for you he is cobalt turquoise cobalt which i can never spell and i'm going to start about here with him just where it starts to fade put a fairly heavy pressure around here and then start to fade it out a little as we get towards the lamp We do want to go all the way up to the edge of the lamp though. Like that. And just sort of fiddle around with adding colour until you are happy. Yeah, this little man needs replacing soon. My son used to collect all my little tiny pencil stubs. But he's grown out of that now, so I think he chucked them away. I mean, there isn't really any point in collecting them, I don't think, getting sentimental about a little pencil. As cute as they might be in the video, I don't want them cluttering at my desk, I'm afraid. Right, that's a bit darker. So I'm gonna... Oh, the recycle men are here, I can hear them. So, last layer. I'm going to use this one. This, oh, this is the oh, this is the cobalt green, and this is quite a greenish tone to it, but I don't mind. It's going to lighten, brighten, and give it a really pretty colour, I think. And I'm going to put that hard over the whole picture. Just want a really hard layer so that it gets rid of the white paper. But as you can see, we can still see all those different colours in there, all the graduation of colour towards the lamp. I noticed as well the lamp's a different height. How did I not notice that before? Carry it on. Try and make sure there's not too much white paper showing. I'm going to do the same on this side. The dustmen aren't too noisy. The machinery is a little bit noisy. I guess I shouldn't call them dustmen. The sexist. There are women as well. Um, I think. I'm not sure what we call them. Refuse collectors, I think, is the term the council use. It's just so common for everyone to say bin then, it's just part of our vocabulary. But we do have to adapt our language with the times, I think. I need to be more aware of doing that with a lot of the things I say. Right. There's our background colour. And, whoops, I'll just crash into all my pencils on the desk. Right, move those aside. Okay, so now I am going to do the centre of the lamp. I'm just going to do one yellow glow, I think. I'm just choosing. I rather like, that's quite warm. I think that's going to work. The um, dark cadmium yellow, it's almost orange. Sorry, that was blurred, wasn't it? almost orange i'm not sure i'm trying to master the settings on my new camera i'm not sure whether this is set to be continuously focused on the back because i don't want my hand coming into it but i think if i leave something here for a while it might come into focus no there's a setting where you can do that but obviously i haven't set it right but maybe that's okay maybe you don't want to see my hand in focus a bit distracting so the lamps i'm going to do in a silver 
So I'm going to use start oh, my creaky chair with cold grey five and to I might this might be the only colour we use actually either end of this bit and then fade leaving a white bit in the middle. So here we're going to leave the the white bit in the centre and here again in the centre. So darker here and less towards the middle. So again same technique trying to leave some white in the centre to manage it on that little bit at the bottom that's too small. Try to colour it without getting my hand in the way too much for you. You just have to use a different technique sometimes. And all underneath and up. So there is our silver. I'm just going to leave it quite plain and simple. And now we've got our building. You can go to town with this building. Any colour, the ones above, as you can see a little bit of them there, they're really brightly coloured. So I don't know whether to do something brightly coloured like that or not. You need to think about the blue that's there as well. I've just noticed that we've got a gap here, which I'm just going to fill in. Um... So, um, let's have a think, what colour? I think purples and pinks will go well with that blue. So that's what I'm going to grab. Um, let me just grab a few and bring them into shot. I think these three might work together. So I'm going to start with the mauve, which is the, whoops, which is the dark purple. And mark out the areas that I think would be darkest under here and then fade it and up from the bottom and fade it so just less layers as we go up like that and do the same on the middle one I'm going to ignore that little line there And this arch towards the middle, I reckon, darker in here. Now the next darkest colour, which is the, the manganese violet, which I rather like. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice has disappeared off somewhere for a minute. I'm going to go over the top of that mauve and just bring that down towards the centre here. Same here the other way, going over the lines to the next picture. And join it just a tad. We'll bring in the other pink to uh, finish them off in a minute. Okay, and this one. Okay, now these overhang bits I think would be a bit dark. I'm just going to do a light layer. I should go over that with the pink and I'm just going to put a little bit of darker colour into the corners. This circle I'm going to ignore. It's not really part of this picture. I actually think it's part of the end picture on this row which has lots of circles on. I think it's escaped. So uh, we'll just leave that for now. And this is the, it's called light red violet which we're going to use to finish off. So it's going to go in this space here. I'm not leaving any white paper. 
it isn't metallic, it doesn't need to be shiny like the lamps. This is going to go over the top of here. Like that. I'm going to finish this off with this. Oops! Crikey. That's a bit up over the lines. I might darken this up a little bit, this, this particular bit that I'm doing now. It depends whether I think it's external or internal. When I first did it, I thought it was inside, and now I'm looking at it, I think it's outside. I'll see when I've finished how I think it's going to look. I'm just peering around the edge of the tripod to do this side, which is uh, an interesting experience. Doing a round and round movement to try and get an even layer colour on this bit. This bit I think would be the lightest, although our lamps are underneath here. I just feel that it looks better being lighter. Mix in with that darker colour on the corner here. Right, let's stop and have a little look and a think. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to grab the manganese violet and darken up this a bit because I'm thinking this is underneath, it needs to be darker. So I'm just going over that a bit. I still want that graduation from light to dark. Like that. And here, I can make that bit darker. I think it'll be darker at the bottom than the top bit. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm done with that one. So there we are. Now I think that came out quite pretty actually with those purples. So that's our sort of lantern y building. I'm not sure. But there we go. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I can just straighten it up because it's a bit wonky. There we go. And uh, happy colouring.